Hey everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to learn to build some kind of a basic reflex test or some kind of a game similar to whack-a-mole, stay tuned. I'm going to be showing the basics in today's video. So before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, storming straight in. This is not fully functional. This is just going to show you the basics before we build it together. So first and foremost, this allows users to paste in a URL to generate this picture so we could swap this out if we wanted to. For example, you'll see if I remove a letter, it'll change the picture. So we we could swap out the URL to really make this whatever we would want. Um, and obviously, if you remove it completely, then they disappear. So the that's part one. Part two is we have a ready dialog and then we have a timer that will populate. And then the idea would be you would start, you know, clicking on these as they appear or really however you prefer to make it. So let's jump through and actually go through building this together. So first and foremost, we really just have this single page. So that's really all that we're going to need. So we're going to need a couple of things before we get started. Now, if you have any questions about AppGyver, it is a free platform. We're using the Community Edition, which is free. And you can check out a link in the description, which is going to have a video overview, along with some other resources. But basically, what we have here is a couple of rows, and I'm going to walk through this, uh, this kind of layout. But I'm going to show you here first. So this is just the page title, the timer element, which we'll go through shortly. And then I have three identical rows, each with three cells, and each with one picture. And each of them are tied to the app variable right here. Then we have our start button and the selector here, which is doing stuff in the background, but it's not really important. It's actually from another video, but you can build it in and make it do something if you want. So let's go ahead and build the UI first, as that's where I usually like to start. Now, before doing that, we're going to add these three app variables, timer, button one, and user selection. So what you're going to do first is you can drag over a container. I'm using this just for spacing because I want a little bit of a gap right here. And then if you want, you can go to your navigation and choose the header bar here and update that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag over a title component, which is this one right here. And you can click on the title component and click the formula box and you can type this out. So I have in double quotes timer with a semicolon space and then plus app vars dot timer, which is the app variable for timer. Now the shortcut, which I'll be using in this video, is you can just type in app vars and double click the app variable that you want. And what this is going to do is it assigns the text timer statically. It's not going to change. Then this is dynamic. This is going to be this timer that continues to count. Then we're going to add our first row. I'm going to go down here on the canvas and show you how I built the row to hopefully save you a little bit of time. So first up, you drag your row over and then you can click through and we're going to add in an extra cell. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drag over an image and in our image, we can go to properties and in the source, we can go to formula. And then here we'll go to app variables and I'm just using button one. You'll get an error. You can ignore it. It's rendering it from a URL. Now, the next thing that you can do is you're going to want to go to layout and figure out what you want the size to be. For example, if I want this to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So now we have the image set up. Now we can click it, hit Control Z or Control C, and then Control V to paste it into this new cell. But you have to make sure that you've actually selected the image and you pasted it. I don't know why, but sometimes it doesn't seem to want to work. So you can just click the duplicate button as well. And then we'll repeat the process and repeat it again. So what you end up with is a single row with three cells and in each cell is an image. Now you're going to want to double check your images and make sure that the width and height came through. And also you're going to want to make sure that the app variable came through. Once you've confirmed that, you can click on the row and you can just click duplicate, duplicate. Now, once you do this, you can save it and you can double check your UI and make sure that it appears. So these are the ones that I've just created, which matches the ones up top. So that's working as expected. 
So now what we can go ahead and do is I'm going to delete these extras because you now know how to build that part. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in, uh, so we're going to scroll down a bit so we have our row that ends right here, which is the part of the game. And then we have an empty container for a spacing. And then I have a title container here with the text selector. You can leave this off if you would like. We're going to leave out this row because it's just two buttons. You can add those if you want and build in some extra functionality. We don't really need it for this app. Then we have a button here that's start, so you can just drag that button over. And then I have an input field that just says image URL. So you can drag this over as well. So this one is a very easy change. We can just go to value, data and variables, app variables, and then you would select the button one option. What this does is when a URL is entered here, it is automatically assigned to the images here, which all share the same image. So that's all that you need for that. And now let's go to the start button. So this is the logic to the timer. It's relatively straightforward. So the first thing I've set is an alert, which I've dragged over. And in the alert, I've just typed in ready. Then from there, I've dragged over set app variable. And you'll see it's connected right here. And I've set the app variable, and you can just choose the one for timer. And then assigned value is going to be formula. And just like we did earlier, app vars .timer space plus one. We don't need any quotes because we're working with numbers and not text. Then what you're going to do is drag over your delay function, which is right here. Now, the critical part about the delay function is you need to make sure that not only are you assigning the correct time, but the correct unit. So I've set this to increment every second. So what I've done here, you may notice that this looks a little confusing. The output of set app variable. I'll just delete this and we can do it together. So when the app variable is set, we're going to delay. And then when the delay is complete, we're going to go back and set the app variable. Basically what this is doing is we get an alert and then it's going to set the timer to one second. Then it's going to wait a second and then it's going to set the timer to plus one, which is two seconds, and then it will continue to repeat. So that's how you build your timer, but you can set yours up however you want. And you can also use that logic to make different types and kinds and styles of games. So that's been saved. So we now have a timer that increments. So now we can click start, you click OK, and you'll see the timer's now going. But nothing happens. We haven't actually set any logic. Now what we're going to do is use the page layout and we're going to set this up together. Now it may look a little bit confusing. So what we can do is we can actually just build all of this together. So first things first, we are going to set, we could just start with an if condition. And what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be checking for and then this is where you're going to choose the logic that makes sense for you. So we're going to check the timer and we need to figure out what conditions need to be present to make these appear or maybe make them disappear. It's really up to you. So what we can do is we could say, and maybe we want to say if the timer's odd, there's actually a function built into AppGyver. So we'll do this together. We can type in odd and double click here. And then when it asks for a number, we can just put in the app variable for timer. And then we can click save. Now, another thing you're going to want to do is go to your app variables and make sure that your timer and the user selection are set to a number. Also, I like to set the timer initial value to zero and the number type here. So once we've done that, we have this condition. And then what's going to happen is we're going to go to the marketplace and you can type in show and download the show function. To download a function, you can just click it and click the install option and they'll appear right here. So I'm going to drag over a couple of hides and a couple of shows. So what we're going to do is if the timer is odd, 
we're going to do this and then this. And if the timer is even, which is basically just if it's not odd, we're going to do this and then this. So it's really up to you how you set this up. What I want to do is I'm going to go through and make each of these images hidden by default. And then you can set it up to show specific components at random times. Then you can add more or less based on your needs. And then the only other thing that you need to do is make sure to continue to check. So what we'll do is we'll delay and we're going to need two of the delays. So just like we did and like you may have seen before, we can expand this and let's try to make this a little bit bigger so it's a little bit less confusing. So you can highlight in bulk and then move things together. So we'll put the odd function up here. And then it's entirely up to you how you set this up, but you need to make sure to add in the delay. And we can do this every second, for example. And then we'll count seconds. And then we're going to create our loop and restart the if condition. And then we're going to do the same exact thing here. So you can duplicate this and drop it down here. Connect this here. Connect this over here. And then we have our function. Now we need to show containers or rows or really, it, it doesn't really matter. It would just depend on what you want specifically. So if you want we have a couple of choices. We can go item by item. For example, make all of these not visible or not. So here's an option. We could set row one, and then in the advanced properties, we can set visible to false. And then we can go to row three, advanced properties, visible, false. And then row four, advanced properties, visible, false. So what this is doing is making all of these invisible by default. And then in our page layout, which is what happens when the page loads, we're going to show a given component. So let's try row two. And then let's hide because we're going to show this later. Let's hide row three. Or if we want, we could do this. Instead, we can show, let's just say row two, and let's duplicate this, and also show row three, or row four, that's close enough. So we are showing these two, and then we're gonna hide whichever one's down here, which is probably gonna be row three. So now we're going to go find row three. And here's what you need to remember when you're setting up this logic, because as you can see, it can get confusing very easily. So we have show component two and uh, show component two and four, and we need to hide component three. So here we need to make sure to show component three or row three, and we need to make sure to hide two and four. So we can go find two. And then we can duplicate this and space these out just a bit and make this component four or row four. And then you'll scroll through, you'll figure out where that specific option is, which is right here. And then you can test the logic. So I haven't had to use the odd function before, but you'll see we can go ahead and click start, okay. And as the timer is going, it doesn't appear as if things are actually moving or changing. So we will need to double check and make sure that this logic is set up properly. So you'll see here, we have odd, but we haven't, I think we need the is function. So we'll say, let's see, is odd. I think we need this one instead. So we will delete this and push this in here, and now we have a valid function. Now let's go here and click start and ready. And you'll see that the rows are expanding as items are becoming visible and invisible. 
So at this point, the last thing that we really have to do, and again, you can obviously stop and make this as complex as you want it, but we just need another one for score. So here we will type in score, and then the app variable would be for button one's already set, so we'll just use that extra user selection. And then you would go through to each of those relevant buttons and swap out the logic to add one or whatever the number of points are. So in this case, we can go to set variable and then we can choose the user selection and the assigned value is, and then the formula, we'll just say app variable and then user selection plus one. And now we can go find our user selection variable. You'll see it's set to one. We'll make sure it's zero. And that's only the first button. So we'll need to make sure that we've set that logic on the other buttons as well. So you can change it as you see fit, but let's just go ahead and test it. So we're going to click save and we'll click start. And I'm just going to keep clicking on this button. And you'll see that as I'm continuously clicking, it's only adding to the score when that one button is available. Now, obviously, this isn't the easiest or best scenario or situation, but it is an option. Now, another thing I want to make a note of really quickly, because I went over to Unsplash, and you're going to want to make sure that you have the rights to use whatever images that you're using. But you can go here, and what I basically did was just copied the link address, and we could go here and paste this in. And this would basically be whatever that new image is. Now, to make it stop moving, we can go here and try to paste it in and see if we can get a usable image. And sometimes you may need to open it and then copy image address and then paste it in from here. And now you'll see we have new images that change with the game. And again, you can continue to click in this exact same spot, but only this one button is adding. So I hope that was helpful. I know that this is not the most appealing game, but the idea here is you can build out and add 20 or 100 of these images. You could change it to where instead of checking every second, it's checking every other second. You could change the logic here to show and hide 10, 20, 30. You could hide and show specific ones at different times, for example, this if condition, instead of checking for is odd, you could say if timer is equal to one, two, three, four, etc. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.